This is a program that discusses issues of faith for people looking for answers. This is Viewpoint with Bob Placey. It's been said that the Bible is the original book about a tale of two cities, Jerusalem and Babylon. Now we all have a curiosity about what the future holds. Today's guest has a unique interpretation of Christ's second coming. Rick Pearson has been a Christian since his youth. And his passion was always to become a missionary, but he never quite got there. Graduating from Oral Roberts University, he found himself back home in Canada selling school buses in the family's business. And that's where this businessman's life was changed when, as he says, God came to him in a week-long vision. My next option was I got jumped in the car and I headed back to Canada and st started. I went to the last place on the face of the earth I wanted to live was in a little town called Tilbury. And I called a friend of mine and I said, I'm living in Tilbury. And he said, that sounds like it's on the edge of the world. And I said, well, it's not, but you can see it from there. You know, they have a population of 3,000 and the average age is deceased. So that's where I went from ORU to a little town and started in the bus yeah. business to sell, sell buses. And I thought, and I, and I couldn't get away from that. I said, Lord, I don't want to do this. I want to be a missionary pilot. And he said, you said you'd do whatever I yeah. told you to do. And, and so I started, I started in the bus business with my dad. My job was to sweep out 150 buses uh, ready for delivery. And I was in a field sweeping out buses. And so that's these, where I was. These were, these were school buses? This is school buses. School buses. How long were you in, the, in that business? Yeah. How long were you in the business? We, I was in that business for 32 years. We sold it uh, about eight years ago. And I stayed in that business for 20, 32 years. I, was, I became the president. And we ran it, and mm -hmm. me and my brother. And that was uh, what I felt I was supposed yeah. to do. And during, during that time, I mean, while you're in the bus business, I mean, you're a believer. You know that God has spoken to you. You've gotten this word from him. Uh, what was your emphasis as far as as far as what I've got to do with this with this this word? I mean, were you were you, you were studying then? You were studying a lot of prophecy, right? I was studying then, but it was not until uh, I when I was at 32 years old, I received a phone call from ORU. They were looking for young businessmen to be on the board of regents, and at that time, they were raising money for uh, medical missions. Mm -hmm. And I had not really been tithing uh, when they called me. And I had a real conviction that my friends were, some of them were giving their lives in missionaries. They were pastors. Here I was selling buses and I was making good money. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't even tithing. And I kind of repented. And I said, okay, Lord. Wait, and I you, took you, a kind, you, you kind of, of repented? You... Well, I did repent. <laughs> <laughs> I did repent because I, I just sold an airplane oh. and I took that money and I gave it uh, to the medical missions. And I said, Lord, I'm sorry, but I, I want to be on this board of regents with these people and I want to participate, but I haven't even been tithing. So I released that money, uh, what I considered a large amount. It was probably 10% of my net worth at the time. And after I released that money, I had an experience very similar uh, to Cornelius in Acts chapter 10, who gave alms and paid alms to God, and uh, he had a visitation. And he, uh, the angel said, your alms have come up for a memorial before God. I want you to go to Peter, and he'll show you the way of salvation. Well, I had the same kind of experience, only I was shown things to come, uh, specifically in the United States of America. And I call that a theophany. I had a visitation uh, over a period of seven days. And at the end of the seven days, an audible voice woke me up and spoke to me and showed me things to come in the United States of America. And what I was shown shook me to the core, to the point where I thought perhaps I was hallucinating or having a, a nervous breakdown. And it scared me. So I jumped on a plane and I went to Oral Roberts University and Oral Roberts came and personally laid his hands on me. And I explained to him some of the vision and th and that I'd had. And he laid his hands on me and he started laughing. 
And well, when he laid his hands on me, I started shaking like a leaf. And he started laughing, and I was a little bit offended. Because here I yeah. am coming down to <clears throat> ORU with this heavy thing, and this guy's laughing at me. And he says, Rick, I'm not laughing at you. He says, you have heard from God. You've been in his presence, and you've heard from God. This is God. And I said, Brother Roberts, I, 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 I'm overwhelmed by this thing. I, I almost feel like I'm going to lose my mind. And he says, you're not going to lose your mind. You stick with us. And you won't lose your mind. And he put me on the board of regents. And then I was on the executive board for 21 years. And uh, Brother Roberts would let me go to his house. And we would talk about things in the spirit realm. And uh, how spirits operated. How angels operated. And uh, he was very, very kind to me. But uh, he gave me a, a good foundation. Now, in, in the process of this time, of this 21 years on the board, I traveled all over the world on mission trips uh, with Brother Roberts and his son Richard. And I, I ministered in, um, you know, in third world countries, medical missions, and I learned a lot uh, about the spirit realm, but all the time I was studying the revelation that I had received when I was 32. And it took me 32 years to catch up intellectually and in scripture with what I was saying. And right now, things are coming to pass right now that I was shown 32 years ago. And it all has to do with America's role in Bible prophecy and the second coming of Jesus Christ. During that time, I mean, it's, it was, was it almost like you were, you were, it was there, but you didn't know what to do with it or you were, you were almost haunted by it? that it, God's not going to let you alone until this comes to fruit? Um, I, I was constantly, I would speak anywhere in church. I would teach, I would teach um, Sunday school. I would speak in churches. Wherever there was an opportunity for me to speak or teach, I would go. And I just figured if God opens the doors, I will walk through but the word is so intense. Um, the, the, the prophecy has an appointed time. Mm -hmm. It says the word has an appointed time to come. If you get ahead of that appointed time, you're, you're really uh, wasting your time. Because when, it, when, when the appointed time comes, then people hear it. Mm -hmm. and receive. But if you're ahead of the curve, they, they, don't, they can't see it. Right now, I think people are seeing what we're saying on our TV show because of the signs of the times around us. People are going, wow, this is very accurate. And we back everything with the word of God, with scripture, Bob, of what we're saying about American prophecy. In a moment, we're going to get into specifics with Rick about the role the United States plays in this prophetic book. You may want to grab your Bible because Rick will be taking us in depth through the book of Revelation. Now, if you enjoy Viewpoint, we're glad. And we really believe that the Bible is not a book to be afraid of, but instead to be consumed by believers. If you value Viewpoint, we'd appreciate your financial support because this program is made possible by viewers just like you. As the climate in our world grows more hostile toward our Christian worldview, Viewpoint is a program designed to help defend our faith. Each week, Bob Placey interviews guests who bring the Bible into focus. And we can be salt and light in this culture. Every description of Babylon in this book is going to come to pass. Helping us understand how relevant God's Word is for today. Viewpoint is completely viewer supported. If you've enjoyed and benefited from our interviews, we would ask you to consider helping us by supporting it financially. Your 20, 50, or even $100 monthly gift will help us continue to bring you more of these programs. Go to WTLW.com now and click Get Involved, or you can send a check to the address on your screen. Thank you for supporting Viewpoint. We're back with Rick Pearson and uh, an amazing revelation from God. And, and Rick, uh, 
God has given you something that uh, is really set for today. A prophecy waits for its time, and, and it sounds like the time is, is, is coming. You found the United States in prophecy. A lot of people discount that and say, no, how could we be that audacious to say the United States is in the Bible? But the most powerful country ever exists in the world, uh, it's got to be there someplace. What have you found? Well, there are 53 descriptions of a Latter-day Nation in the Bible called Babylon the Great. And America, the United States of America, meets every description. Now, um, I can go through some of those if you want. Number one, uh, she's a providential nation raised mm -hmm. up by God's mandate. Because in Jeremiah, he, he talks about this lady of kingdoms who's, who has a golden cup in her hand that God has raised up. They, they, Jeremiah, Isaiah... Uh, and the book of Revelation 17 and 18, there are four chapters in the Bible that talks about this latter-day nation. She's the richest, most powerful nation in the world. Uh, and she is the seventh of eight providential nations. It's now, in Revelation 17, 10, he talks about uh, this woman sitting upon the beast. Most traditional prophecy <clears throat> teachers will tell you that that woman rides the beast throughout the tribulation period, but the Bible doesn't say that. It says that the beast and the ten horns who have not yet received power, in Revelation 17, 12, that this woman sits upon her, upon the beast, before they come into power. Now, it also talks in Revelation 17, 10, that this woman, woman sitting upon this seven-headed beast that says the seven heads are not only uh, seven mountains of the, earth, of the earth, but they're seven kings. Five have fallen, one is, and then the seventh and the eighth beast are still yet to come. Explain to me real quick. Of, of these kingdoms. Give, it, give us a quick definition of a providential nation, because that is very important when it comes to the United States. What is a providential nation? Provident, providential nation means it's raised up by divine mandate. In other words, God spoke about it before it existed. And Daniel, in chapter 4, uh, Nebuchadnezzar had that uh, dream of the image, and we saw Babylon, then, then came Persia, then came Greece, then came, uh, I believe it was Rome. Mm -hmm. Those were all providential nations that were spoken into existence before they ever came. Babylon was spoken into existence and prophesied about 750 years before the birth of Christ, and the United States of America meets every description. She's the seventh of eight providential nations. And in Revelation 17, 10, it says, and the eighth kingdom is the beast. That 10 nation new world order that's going to rise. The seventh nation is described as a woman. This woman sits upon the beast. The word is kathamia. It means rules over or controls or polices over the beast before he's released. So we have a new world order right now that is trying, struggling to get world dominance. And we have a woman, a nation, who's sitting upon her like a firewall to the world saying, no, you're not going to have world domination. There's coming a point when the eighth nation will be raised mm -hmm. up and the seventh nation will be deposed. Tell us, tell us a the little. The seventh nation is the United States of America. And, and when we look at America right now, I mean, you talk about it being a providential nation. That uh, the reason the pilgrims came, the reason the Mennonites came, the reason these people came from Europe was to escape uh, persecution. And and they came here, and the forefathers, our, our, our forefathers, founded this upon biblical principles. I mean, they 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 quoted the Bible. What, I don't know how many times in the, in the Declaration of Independence. In the, Four in, times. Yeah, and so it's there. Yes. And, and, but America since then has really defiled itself. 
I mean, you look at, uh, 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 you mentioned in your, in your study that the worship of Baal. Now, how can we have modern Baal worship when that was centuries ago? How can America be involved in modern Baal worship? Well, Baal worship is part of the, I think there's six or seven descriptions of the different Baal, uh, uh, Baal worship tactics that happen, uh, witchcraft, necromancy, mediums. But the, uh, l let's say the, the, the tipping point for Baal worship comes to a place where people sacrifice their children to the god of Moloch. Moloch. Yes. Now this is where the shedding of innocent blood, it says, will not be pardoned but by the hand of them who shed it. So now here you have a nation, the United States of America, who was founded upon covenant. Now in Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 15, you see the pattern that God sets for any nation that comes into covenant. I will bless you. I will make you a blessing. You'll be the head and not the tail. If you obey my voice, if you obey my voice, if you obey my voice, all these things will come. You will be a lender and not a debtor. Um, uh, your, your fruits of your field will, will, will come forth and you'll have prosperity. And people and nations will come to you because you're in covenant with God, because every good gift of God comes down from the Father of lights. And America got into that covenant with God, very similar to Israel and very similar to you personally. Mm -hmm. If you come into covenant with God, you can have a personal covenant with God, just like Abraham did. Well, the United States built their foundation on that covenant and it invoked the blessings of God on this nation in fact, it invoked it so much that she fulfills all the prophecies as a, as a providential nation. God said, this is what will happen to this nation, but something happens. Instead of staying in Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 15, she crosses Stepped over outside. into verse 16. And there's, for every verse of blessing, there's three verses of warning what will happen if you don't obey my voice. You'll become a debtor nation. Uh, your land will be defiled. Yeah. You'll not be the head. You'll be the tail. And something starts happening. This is what happens to Babylon. She breaks covenant with God, and he says, get thee into darkness, Babylon. And she becomes the habitation of every foul and unclean spirit. And God hands. Now, there's still a remnant of people in Babylon because God says, uh, in um, Revelation 18, come out of her, my people, be not partakers of her sins, nor in her plagues. So something's coming to Babylon, the seventh providential nation, where she must be deposed before the eighth nation can take over. Baal worship is the tipping point. When you sacrifice your children mm -hmm. to, to Baal, that blood cries out and God says it will not be pardoned. If you shed the innocent blood of man, by man will your blood be shed. Your blood be shed. Right. So this is where we're coming. Babylon right now, America is, there, there is a tremendous battle right now for the soul of America mm -hmm. and it all has to do with her covenant with God. Choose you this day who you will serve. And uh, before Oral Roberts died, about six months before, I went and visited him. And I said, Brother Roberts, what do you see coming to America? And he said, Rick, I see a line being drawn in the sand. He said, the light will get lighter, the dark will get darker. But these people, these secular humanists, are going to harden their hearts just like they did at the days of Noah. They will not come to God and they'll harden their hearts. But the light will get brighter. We will, the Christians will get brighter with revelation knowledge and they will know what's going on because Daniel was promised, close the book and seal it. It's not for you to know Daniel, but it'll be revealed in the end times. Knowledge will expand, will expand and the wise will understand, but the wicked will not. Our Prophecy USA is built to put into people's mind this Bible, this word of God with revelation, and they will be able to discern what's happening in America. 
we, we are going to a reprobate society right now in Romans 1. Mm-hmm. But the good news is the bride of Christ wins. <laughs> when the judgment yeah. comes down on Babylon, the bride will go up. And we win big time. But hold on. Hold on to your faith. Hold on to your Bible. Hold on to the word of God. Doesn't matter how dark it gets, the light will always shine in the darkness, and we win. And I am a pre-tribulation rapture enthusiast. It's all through Scripture. When the judgment comes down, the bride will go up. Yeah, I, I Does want, that answer your question, Bob? I, I want to ask you one other question in the, in the midst of that when we're talking about the United States and the battle going on for the soul of this country. And people keep saying well, you know, things like abortion, sacrificing our children to Molech, uh, that this country needs to be called to repentance. The church should be calling it to repentance. Is it even possible for the United States to repent? And if, if we are the mysterious Babylon, if we are the Babylon the Great, repentance won't come to this nation as a nation, but can it come to individuals? As you mentioned, the light gets brighter. Uh, individuals could still have that time to repent. This nation, are we lost? Th- this is the good news. The shedding of innocent blood will not be pardoned except by the blood of him that shed it. But 2,000 years ago, innocent blood Mm -hmm. was shed so that everyone could be forgiven of any sin that they've committed. The word says he has spoken it, he will also do it, he has purposed it, and he will bring it to pass. Every description of Babylon in this book is going to come to pass. But the timing can be changed if enough people repent and say, Lord, have mercy on us. God may give us another 40 years of blessing. And I believe that the bride of Christ and the body of Christ will walk in prosperity and in victory right up until the day of Babylon's judgment. Well, let's, let's and get into when the, the judgment comes down, the bride will go, bride up. Will go up. Let's get into that for a second, because it does say Babylon will be destroyed in an hour. It will be gone in an hour. You, you're talking about, talking about post-tribulation, that the bride of Christ is gone before that. But there's still, there's still people down here that, that, that would believe, but haven't yet repented, or they, they, they may change in that, dur- during that period of time. What is, uh, and this is always a dangerous question, but give me your sequence when you talk about a pre-tribulation rapture, I mean, some people don't even believe in the rapture, but I pity them. But anyway, they don't even believe in it. But uh, give me your sequence on that tribulation, Babylon being destroyed, uh, when the tribulation begins, when the rapture is, uh, the return of Christ. Okay. Um, Jesus said, pray that you might be worthy to escape the things that shall come to Mm -hmm. pass. Then he goes and he warns all seven churches, and he he looks at this church, he says, you've lost your first love. The other church is full of dead works. Uh, Pergamos, you're you're committing fornication and adultery. Thyatira, you're following the woman Jezebel. You're sacrificing your children. That's what Jezebel did. Um, Jesus is warning everyone before the judgment comes, come out of her, my people, be not partakers of her sins. Uh, And he says to get ready. Then he gives us the parable of the virgins. Mm -hmm. In Matthew uh, 25, half of the virgins were ready, the other half weren't. So when the bridegroom comes, half of the brides left and the other half goes up because they made themselves ready. So the big thing is now is get your house in order with God. Now, when the judgment comes down on Babylon, that's found in um, Revelation 18, and you can see that in one hour, in one hour it comes down. In one hour she's burnt with fire. In one hour all 27 products listed in her come to naught. In one hour the merchants of the earth stand in the fear of her torment. What is that torment? It's a fire, it's a nuclear that comes on her. And then in Isaiah he says, in one day the loss of children and widowhood that Babylon falls. Well, that, that, that judgment that comes down, it's all talking about an hour. But in Revelation uh, chapter 3, the church of Philadelphia, Jesus said, I your heart and you have kept my word. And because you have kept my word, 
I will open a door for you that no man can shut, and I will keep you from the hour of tribulation that shall come upon the earth. Now in Revelation 18, you see that the fire comes down on Babylon and she's burned in one hour. And then in Revelation 19, you just keep following those verses and you'll see that, that there's rejoicing in heaven for God has judged Babylon the great for her sins, for her Baal worship. And then there's a voice in heaven of much people and it's the marriage supper of the lamb. For the marriage of the lamb has come and his bride has made herself ready. So the rapture takes place when the judgment comes down. Paul said, uh, those of you who are troubled, rest with us when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and believe not the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. When the fire comes down, the fourth man from Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego is going to manifest his presence just like he did in Latter-day Babylon instantaneously. We will be changed. The flames will have no power over our body and we will be taken. That is the only time sequence in the Bible that, sh that, sh that, that shows where the rapture could take place. Now, there's five verses all through Revelation that talks about these tribulation saints that are in the tribulation and they're tested. They're tested in the tribulation because they didn't test themselves. If it says judge, uh, if, if you judge yourself, God won't have to judge you. So uh, right now is a very good time to examine yourself and get yourself, get your house in order uh, because we don't know when this hour of judgment will come and, and in Revelation 17, 16, it says, and the beast and the ten horns will hate the woman and they will burn her with fire for God has put into their hearts to fulfill his purpose. God's purpose. God will use the Antichrist and the ten nations to judge Babylon who has fallen out of covenant with them. But he doesn't judge the church. He judges those that don't want God. God is a miracle working God. And the fourth man is alive and well. And he's, he's going to come and deliver us. When this thing comes down, the fourth man has never lost his power to deliver. If you want to hear more from Rick, you can find his podcast, his books, and more studies at prophecyusa.org. Now, if you'd like to hear more about Viewpoint, all of our episodes are not only on YouTube, but you can hear the audio on your favorite podcast app. Just search for Viewpoint with Bob Placey. And when you find us, please share it with your friends. Thanks for joining us today. Remember, you can watch the interviews you've seen today on demand on YouTube. Plus, you can also listen to all of our episodes on the Viewpoint with Bob Placey podcast on Apple, Spotify, and anywhere you listen to a podcast.